Amid fears that China's economy is slowing down, commodity prices are soaring and there are more signs of global inflation. Furthermore, the U.S. Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates perhaps as soon as next year. The dollar gained strength and investors have reduced their risks with regards to the South Korean won, the Thai baht, the Japanese yen and the other Asian currencies. The massive retreat from the Asian market caused currencies across Asia to plunge. The yen tumbling around 3% in the last month. The South Korean won is down 8% year-to-date, while the Thai baht has sunk over 10%. The Taiwan dollar is heading against the wind from foreign outflows after being on top of Asia's currency ranking in the first nine months of this year. Strong exports and trade surplus helped the Taiwan dollar beat the strength of the U.S. notes and outperform Asian currencies between January and September. It's now fallen behind some of its peers as foreign investors sold 2.3 billion U.S. dollars of local equities this month, up from 440 million U.S. dollars in September. Taiwan's currency slumped to a six-month low earlier in October. Analysts expect a correction of the Taiwan dollar in the next 3 to 12 months. Extreme port clogging in the States has become a major problem stretching to the end of this year. Goldman Sachs warned that container pileup and upraised shipping costs are likely to continue at least through the middle of next year. No immediate solution for the underlying supply-demand imbalances at U.S. ports is available yet. Ryan Peterson, chief executive officer of logistics company Flexport, said the port disarray could be worse than the 2008 crash of Lehman Brothers. Because with Lehman, the government could just print tons of money to flood the banks with liquidity here we need real-world solutions. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on this week's Funday News. Here are your top stories. The world is heading for an economic recovery, yet higher-than-expected demands led to a global supply chain traffic jam, which resulted in an energy crisis followed by inflation. To normalize inflation, the U.S. Fed is going to taper with rates rising also. This month, currency investors are leaving the Asian market, lessening exposure to currencies in this region for the U.S. dollar. The Taiwan dollar also faces hard hits by foreign outflows. Therefore, it will be entering an adjustment period in the next 3 to 12 months, while hot money flocked to the states. Port congestion in U.S. ports present a problem that may last until the middle of 2022, with global supply chains still needing time to be replenished. After visible signs of recovery for months, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield hit its highest point since mid-May in mid-October. Some market participants predict further growth if the Fed accelerates taper. Media reports that such anticipation has caused massive retreat of investors and tremors across Asian currencies, with the Japanese yen tumbling around 3%, the Korean won being down 8%, Thailand's baht sinking over 10%, while Turkey's lira has plunged around 10% in the last month. Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group estimates that with the hike in energy prices and recovery of business activities, countries with less favorable current account balances would be at a disadvantage in navigating macroeconomic trends and Asian currencies could remain vulnerable in the foreseeable future. Media reports, as of October 25th, foreign investors sold 2.3 billion U.S. dollars worth of equities in the Taiwan market within one month. It's a stunning increase of from 440 million U.S. dollars in September. It ended the leading role of the Taiwan dollar after topping Asians' currency ranking in the first nine months of this year. Royal Bank of Canada estimates three factors signaling a correction in the Taiwan dollar in the next three to 12 months. Following the U.S. Fed saying that it could start scaling back asset purchases in November and worldwide rising inflation prompted traders to price in a rate hike as early as mid-2022. New Taiwan dollar slumped to a six-month low on October 12 to 28.152 per U.S. dollar. Although Taiwan typically would follow the Fed in raising rates, it may need to hold back if domestic growth weakens, which would weigh on the currency. 
because a weaker currency could further boost exports after orders climbed to an all-time high in September. It could also mitigate some of the risks stemming from the energy crunch. Royal Bank of Canada believes the relatively lower carry, overvaluation versus most other Asian currencies, and the expected decline in the exports boom as the rest of the world normalizes would cause a correction in the Taiwan dollar in the next 3 to 12 months. We've talked about the worldwide supply chain disruption before, but not the actual status of a particular port. Let's take Los Angeles port for example. Do you have any idea how many shipping goods are waiting to be docked? Well, Anna will cover the full story for us later. For now, let me share some figures with you. Goldman Sachs estimates that there is a staggering 24 billion US dollars in goods sitting outside the port of Los Angeles and the port of Long Beach alone. 24 billion US dollars in goods. Well, let's take a closer look. In fact, the congestion problem started in mid-2020, but it turned out to be quite atrocious recently. As of October 18th, there were 73 or more ships waiting off the coast of Los Angeles. The day after, 62, while 37 of them destined for the port of LA and the other 25 destined for Long Beach. The 62 ships contained the equivalent of about 200,000 20-foot containers. Overall, there were a record 100 cargo vessels, including barges, tankers, car carriers, and ships that carry bulk goods, anchored just outside the ports as of October 18th. But the worst is that the supply chain bottlenecks are raising costs, delaying shipments and leaving shoppers with fewer options. Goldman Sachs estimates there is a 24 billion US dollars in goods waiting to be offloaded outside the two ports. Unfortunately, it could be one of the biggest problems of 2022 as well, CNN estimated. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin teams up with Boeing, Sierra Space, and several other partners. It was announced on October 25th that they plan to build a commercial private space station called Orbital Reef, which is scheduled to be up and running by late 2020s. It's the latest ambitious project among Lockheed Martin's plans for a space station called Starlab and the Houston company Axiom Space goal to launch a free-flying outpost. In Blue Origin's announcement, Orbital Reef's eyes are on customers that include national governments as well as private industry and space tourists. The outpost will initially complement the International Space Station, but eventually will take the baton from ISS. NASA's ISS is scheduled to be retired somewhere between 2028 to 2030. Just a few days ago, on October 21st, Lockheed Martin, Voyager Space, and Nanorax announced that they plan to get a free-flying private space station up in low Earth orbit by 2027. The outpost called Starlab is envisioned to be a tourist destination as well as a research and manufacturing hub. Prior to this, in January 2020, NASA agreed to allow Axiom Space, a Houston-based company, to construct a new space station module that would launch in 2024. When the space station retires, the Axiom Space component will detach and take on a life of its own as an independent commercial outpost.
And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us on this week's Fun Day News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Wade Lee, your host, and I'll see you next time.